Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of open source and Linux, anything that's tangent-related. I'm Vince Stone. Mm-hmm. That is Joe Bryan, everybody watching us live on okay. Twitch. Wrapping up a little bit of a pre-show, talking about uh, games needing stories in order to be fun. Yeah. That maybe we've just evolved past, uh, hey, here's thing, do thing, you know. Uh, Jill was giving the example of a puzzle game. Like, he's, yeah, you got to give me a puzzle and pull some out. Yeah, pull some out. Yeah, it's kind of keep me interested. But even before that, we 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 saw this. I saw uh, Pedro posted this at our Discord. I sure which did. Which just by the headline, <laughs> what type of JavaScript nonsense do you guys have going on PC? Per look at that jump. Like, try to scroll. Up. There we go. Oh boy. <laughs> Just by this headline, we saw Intel discontinues ARC A770 graphics card. Wow. Immediately, temporary panic, followed by, like, yeah, that's Intel. I believe that they completely killed the line, but no, 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 no. (laughs) And they said it was limited, so. Right, it really was a limited edition. So (laughs) what happened is, um, what they've decided is they're no longer going to be producing the ARC A770 graphics card, the Intel branded one that they make. However, it does seem, by all accounts, the silicon is still good. So you're going to be able to get them from Acer and who else did you, you said you saw one, like, was it Gigabyte? Azrock. Azrock, okay. Yeah. <laughs> they will still be making the A770s. So don't panic. Don't panic. And unless you feel like panicking. Now, <laughs> yesterday before uh, Trackmania, we do Trackmania on Tuesdays. We do the new maps. You're welcome to join. Have a good time. Scott mm-hmm. popped in, and I saw Scott and chat earlier. Scott's like, I'm going to show you people how to race. He's like, how do I wall ride? It's always a fun yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't played in a very long time. <laughs> I, he had a good screenshot. It's like, it's been six months. It's a really yeah. <laughs> sadistically fun game to play with a group of people. And we got a good group if you yeah, want to come hang sure out. Do. But Joe was like, you don't have any of your lights on, Vin. Like, yeah, yeah. I've been looking at light. I don't have. They got them yeah, on now. Were- you were playing around with all your lights and US, you having u- light USB adventures. <laughs> so I picked up some new LED strips. Ah. Now, the original ones, your brother had bought. I remember that. Yeah. The very first ones you used in your studio. <laughs> Still used them, not broke, don't fix, right? Like, yeah. The problem is, is they were... um. 12 volt, so they used a little inverter uh, mm. from a wall, and that oh, was yeah. feeding. Eventually, those mm. go bad, and when they go bad, they just start feeding back into the electrical line, and you can pick them up. And guess what? Audio equipment. Mm. Turns out I have some audio equipment in here, Joe. Yes, <laughs> quite a few, I'd say. <laughs> so I really couldn't use them, and um, technology has evolved, and you can get very like super cheap uh, five volt LED strips now. I think I paid like eight bucks for a roll. How long was this? Like 12 uh, foot or something like that? 32.8 foot. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Even better than I thought. <laughs> Not too bad. If you're curious, everything we have in the studio, I've already updated it. Uh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go to LinuxGameCast.com. Go to the about section. You don't buy it on Amazon. Buy it on wherever you want to buy stuff. But if you just get that curious, that you can find it yourself because everything is, uh, yeah, Gotus. But here's the thing. I'm not going to tell you about Gotus either because this is like one of a billion. You know, it's the Amazon yeah. thing, right? Like there's yeah, 90 absolutely. companies with this exact same packaging. Yes. But if you're looking for it, it's like eight bucks. It works. It's got the sticky stuff. and um, It's got sound activation too, I see by the remote. <laughs> it does, and that confused me to no ends, Jill. <laughs> Because yeah, the first thing I did before pulling anything out was like I plugged it up, <laughs> hooked it up, and I'm like blink, and I was walking around doing something because I think I had it out in the kitchen, and it was I'm like what's going on? And then I start tapping thing. I'm like ah, the music thing, mm-hmm. and that's what it was. So <laughs> needless to say, we'll never be using that function. And um, yeah, there you go. Also picked up a box of you can never have too many. And I had to search for these. I was talking to Pedro about USB wall plugs, right? You just need these in the modern yeah. life. You got to have them. You got 
you don't know that they're, they're kind of like PC power supply cables, you know, where you got one, you put one of those cables into a closet. Six months later, you got like nine of them. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. you know, I, I, I don't know why, but you know, I probably have like 20 power supply cables for computers, much like that USB wall chargers. Probably got like 15 or 20, but I wanted some with two on it. And the problem with the two, they're all made for like wall sockets. So they're wide. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, cause your plugs are stacked like that. Mm-hmm. I want this in my rack where the plugs are like this. So I needed one that was going to be this way or at least perfectly square. And I found some and I was very happy. So I ordered a box. Of them. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. And they haven't they- got on fire either. They didn't happen to be the anchor ones, are they? Because I have some square anchor ones that I like. No, these are um, Alkin. Oh, yeah, Belkin. Good. Alkin. Oh, Bel- Alkin. <laughs> A-I-L-K-I-N. <laughs> Alkin. <laughs> it was the one that I sorted through that had the most reviews. In the first review, it wasn't like this thing melted and got on fire. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, there we go. That's really all I've been up to. Doing that. Um, you have been um tending to Steve. Yeah, my Steve husband has had a really, really bad cold. And that's just after a few weeks ago. Me, me and him had a, a weird uh viral infection and he had a staph infection and then then he got this bad cold from work. <laughs> and fortunately I didn't get it. I've been so careful and I'm O C D with hand washing, so that does help a lot. But I've been I've been getting his meals and and cleaning house and and just making him comfortable. So, but he is doing much better. He was feeling much better when he got up this morning, which makes me very happy. Mm. And because I was concerned, I was getting concerned because it was so bad. But he's doing good. He's coming out of it. <laughs> good, Steve. Wish you the best. Get better. Um, take your uh, aspirin or whatever you take when you're sick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, lots of uh, day quill, night quill, that kind of thing. <laughs> Advil. Not all yeah. at once. Not at once. <laughs> and uh, um, I've also been having fun playing games on my new gaming rig in the portal case I showed off last week. I've been having a lot of fun with that computer, including uh, downloading demos from the Steam Next Fest, which is one of my favorite times of of year that when valve does the next fest that is because it's 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 cool to be able to download demos of games that you're really interested that are going to come out soon Mm -hmm. and uh then you can put them on your wish list and and pick them up when they're available (laughs) that is uh yeah it's really turned into like one of the strange things like the next fest i'm like what is i'm like oh this this is actually kind of neat isn't it yeah because yeah, you get to see what people are working on, then you um, completely forget about the game, and eight months later, it just shows up. Like, it I just shows up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I played this one called Color Colorblind, I was telling Ven about. It's a uh, first-person puzzle platformer, uh, similar to Portal, and uh, but it's, it's visually really well done. It's a, a, a grayscale world, and you have to put uh, these cute uh, colored cubes in a you know a sprocket industrial wheel device to to go to the next level, but you have to solve puzzles to try and get the cubes. And they're up in the rafters, and they're down below, and you got to figure out how to get the cubes. <laughs> you Does have it to have put a them in the game. Story with it. Yes, and um, that was the other thing I liked about it. It 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 has a minimal story, but there is a story. And, they tried. But in, yeah, they they really tried, and and the voice is kind of cool. I, I enjoyed the 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 voice work on it, and yeah, so it wasn't just a, a first person puzzle game with no story, where you just go in and solve puzzles and figure out how you how you got to solve the puzzle. This this one has a little backstory, which is really nice, and I like those kind of games now that I've gotten older. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh I always did. I mean, I love Portal, but now, you know, before I could just right, right. jump in any game and and with a puzzle without story, and now I get kind of bored with those games. 
So, so what I'm hearing is we need some enterprising, one of my <laughs> brothers and sisters out there in the game development world, you know what game needs a backstory? It needs an overarching plot, and it probably is going to take three games to tell the entire story. Mm. Tic-tac-toe. Ah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Let's do it. Or how about Snake? A trilogy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tic-tac-toe. <laughs> so let's hop into it because some people get excited when they see this they do yeah Woo-hoo! that makes me excited Vin. <laughs> they look at it because they, they're irrationally nostalgic and there's nothing wrong yes. with that this is modern <laughs> and functional cd desktop based on fvwn also known as nscde it's intended for people who don't like the modern hype yeah. Desktop. You know, all that craziness. This is, this is what you remember seeing from back in the day, isn't it? Like, look at that. Look at that. Let me scroll it's down there. beautiful. Ah. It's simple. And even though, you know, it's classic and retro, it's got a nice theme of grays and blues. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, like, what is the theme? Uh like Retro. Get off, get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah. Is that a theme? Is that a theme we can have? Get off my lawn. Because for me, you know, when I, I see that, this, this is what I remember seeing. Uh, this is what expensive workstations looked like to me back in the 90s. You saw that and you're like, oh, oh that must be a super powerful computer. And granted, you know, I played around with an SCDE because I come from CD. CD was a desktop, like my first Unix. And then later on, a Linux mm-hmm. desktop. That's what I was using. And it's just, not really functional on a modern PC, but this is, uh, I have played around with it. It's honestly just like a little too stripped down, a little too stripped down, even for me, <laughs> but this new release brings a bunch of neat things to it that you would expect for something modern. QT6, look at that X screensaver nice. site, Pycom compositor for you people who still want to run a compositor for whatever reason, Thunderfox, so Thunderbird, Firefox, theme integration. And it's available as uh, Debian RPM packages. It's all in there. I just always give this a little shot because, you know, people make sleeper PCs. Mm -hmm. Where they like to take the retro case and all that. So if you're going to be doing that, you might as well put a sleeper desktop manager on there too. Some that looks like, oh, that's old. And then it's not (laughs) going to do anything. It's like, it does everything you need in a modern desktop. Yeah, absolutely, Ven. I mean, I'm still rocking window maker. (laughs) Come on, that's pretty retro too. <laughs> but yeah, CDE, I mean, that's when I started on with uh, Sun Systems and then the Unix days. Me and Ven both started on CDE. And it was, you know, the kind of the backbone for XFCE. Hmm. So, yeah. And we had actually talked about this way back on LWW early last year. Right. And um, that it was, you know, a new in development version of the uh, common desktop environment. And I was excited about it then. And it's nice to see it getting so many great updates. <laughs> this is really positive. You got to work on it. And yeah. there is something to be said about we figured out how to make the desktop environment functional mm-hmm. almost 30 years ago. Yeah. Some people didn't have argue. to change that too much. <laughs> Don't, don't tell that to Gnome and KDE, Jill. They yes, will bite you. this is true. This is true. They could take a, you know, <laughs> take they're, they're, a, a they're going pill in their own direction. From... There's, the, uh, <laughs> there, there's something, you know, if you have a bunch of designers who job, job and it's their job to design, what are they going to do? They're going to design. Mm-hmm. But there is something to be said about like, hey, you can still get everything done with a system. If you want something that's completely out of your way and just does the thing, the thing being, be a desktop, give me some windows, give me a task launcher. There you go. And, you know, XFCE strikes that balance for me mm-hmm. personally between, yeah. you know, a full on, you know, just window manager and desktop manager. That balance of like being minimal, but also being useful. You know, mm-hmm. I can be productive with it. And I yeah. think this is very, very much in that same vein. And it looks horrible and in the good way. Yeah. You look at that way. and yeah, if you get nostalgia and you're like, oh, that that's a wretched 
so 90s color scheme for a desktop environment. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, give me more. So, there you go. Go yeah. try it out. Doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> and you'll probably have a good time with it. Um, and, you know, unless you're on Wayland, then, but, you know, it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Well, one of the features I was really happy about with this version is it is it uh, now when you want to put a, a new theme, you can reload it without restarting FEWM. So that, w- that was an issue. You had to keep reloading FEWM. And uh, that's been fixed. And there's even more themes now. And there's been just lots of X11 integration improvements, which is always solid. And they've done a, you know, a great job with updates and keeping this project active. Thank you. <laughs> It's awesome. That's good. And you know, <laughs> don't be afraid. When you got something like this, you're eventually going to be like, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> Which there's nothing wrong with that. The, 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 yeah. the idea that you constantly have to add new features and scope creep and everything else. I'm like, no, I, I built the thing that I want to build and it works the way I want it to work. I'm good. This project's mm-hmm. good. I can respect that. Yeah. But some of these creature comforts, it's really good to see. Now, Jill. The last thing I was thinking about the other day was artificial intelligence in a browser. But Jill said, we're having none of that. You need to think about it. Here's Opera. And it's got AI built into it now for reasons. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's revisit one of my favorite web browsers from the past. You know, it runs great on Linux and has as Ven was stating, a very intriguing update. Yes, the Opera web browser just hit its 100th version, and with this release, it is actually now known as Opera One. Opera One is the first browser to come with an integrative browser artificial intelligence. And Opera One's AI is named Aria. And last yesterday during Trackmania, (laughs) when me and Ven were talking about it, uh, I realized, that the reason why they called their AI Aria is because of the name of 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 the browser is Opera and and Aria is an is a song in an opera, so that makes sense. Anyways, Aria can be easily reached from a new command line by con, by typing Control plus forward slash and asking your question, or you can use the browser sidebar button that opens an AI conversation panel besides your web content. And you can punch in your prompt or question there. And it, it offers free access to chat, GPT, and other AI services, along with up-to-date information from the web. And But there is a catch. You do have to create an Opera account to access the AI oh, features. Yes. But, <laughs> but that does seem reasonable, honestly, because right now you have to create accounts <laughs> for to access most of these systems in the first place. <laughs> so at least it's Opera <laughs> and not Microsoft. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that's that's a really good thing. Yeah, on, the, on Microsoft Edge, you have to have a Microsoft account to use their AI features. <laughs> So, Ben, what did you think of the Opera browser? Downloaded it, played around with it. That's what I think mm-hmm. about it. Now, how do you get it? How do you get your hands on it? First off, I want to give a big shout out to the uh, Aria, Opera Aria mascot. I thought that was an was inspired choice. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Easy enough joke to make. Had to be made. How do you download <laughs> it? What do you get? You get a Debian, you get a flat pack, and you get a snap. So, all your bases are covered right there. Mm-hmm. Not a problem. Debian package. Out of the box, good idea. I wish more would do it. Gives you a nice incursive screen with a yes or no. It's like, hey, do you just want us to add this to your repo? Your app.sources? I'm like, no. Thank you. It's about 300 megs installed. Integration, what do you got? You got Aria, you got ChatGPT, and uh, ChatSonic are all options. And the little sidebar, Mm -hmm. seven messengers, Facebook, WhatsApp, (laughs) Telegram, InstaDoc, Twitter, and the like. It's not a Chromium-based browser, though. But that's what you got. It runs on Debian 12. If you need yet another Chromium browser that pretty much is another Chromium browser, but now this one's got a sidebar with access to its own AI thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really convenient. That you need to sign up for. 
if you want another company to have some data collection on you, you want to spread the love around. You're like, oh <laughs> man, I'm being stingy giving Google all my information and Microsoft all my information. I need somebody else in my life. I'm going to give the Opera yeah. whatever holding company owns Opera this week. Mm -hmm. Give them the information. I, um, yeah, I tried and I browsed around with them. Uh, my whole takeaway is, and I've said the same thing about Vivaldi, and to a lesser extent, mm -hmm. Brave, but Brave is guilty of it. There's too much whiz -bang nonsense that I don't need the browser. What do I want a browser to browse? That's what I want a browser to do. <laughs> yeah. I want it to render web pages. What about, uh, no. And I've Aww. had this complaint going all the way back to the 90s with Netscape Communicator. That's what killed <laughs> yes. that. Like, I want a web browser. Like, oh, how about email? No, how about a, HT, a WYSIWYG HTML? And no, <laughs> I don't know. I, I want a web. No, come on. You know, why is this thing so bloated and slow? Yeah. Just give me a web well, browser. That's all I want. I personally like the sidebar. You know, I have, uh, th that made me happy in the Netscape days so i'm happy we have the likes of you know opera and vivaldi that have the sidebar to access the the bookmarks and the history that's that's what i like to use it for <laughs> mm. and i do like speed dial you know opera introduced a speed dial on your homepage, which i really like i don't even know what that is <laughs> the, 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 that's where on on your on your page you have the uh boxes of uh, short links to other websites and it's oh. just kind of See, the only reason nicely. I like that because that's an easy way to bust people when you're over at their yeah. house. You just open a new tab and see what they've been up to real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, I see what you've been looking at. But yeah, so I tested Opera on uh, Pop! OS. And what was nice is I was going to go and, and download the, the Linux install. And then I realized I didn't need to because it was already in the Pop! OS repros from yesterday. So when it came out. <laughs> so... That was really nice. And it's a really fast and zippy Chrome browser, despite all the sidebar and, and all the Imagine how the much faster features. it could be. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's pretty fast. And honestly, I've I've used op opera on and off for years. I used to use it a lot more, but now sometimes I, I've actually even used it to use Jitsi with because it's really good with Jitsi. <laughs> <laughs> or WebRTC. So, um, yeah, I say go out there and have fun with it and have fun playing with the AI. I think that's, you know, that's that's very innovative. A lot of the other, including my favorite browser, which is Firefox, you have to install a uh, extension to have access to chat GPT within the browser. But this you don't have to. It's already there for you. I could just open up my Bard tab. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I do that too. Yes. <laughs> Like, oh, look, I have AI in the browser. <laughs> or you can just go to bing.com if you want some AI in the browser, too. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. Microsoft Edge. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but yeah, this, it's go nice. It's nice to hit control uh, forward slash and, and query chat GPT. Isn't that a difficult thing to put in the show notes? Control plus forward slash. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no. Not on Linux, it isn't. <laughs> no, no, when, when you're writing it down. So, oh, so I hit control, then plus. I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. That's always been. <laughs> I, when I used to write that, when you had to use multiple commands, I would say, you know, alt and F4 instead of saying alt plus, because people sometimes like. But when you're dealing with a, as somebody who writes technical newbies. documentation, yeah, but anytime you're in a browser or anything Chromium based, if you're doing control, never use the plus icon after that. Because all that's going <laughs> yeah. to do and enlarge everything. Enlarge, zoom, and yeah. <laughs> Something to keep in mind. Now, what you might be here for is uh, furthering the evolution of CentOS Stream. That's right. IBM, Big Blue, mm -hmm. and Red Hat has some interesting news for you. So, what you might not know, as uh, before CentOS Stream, Red Hat pushed public sources for RHEL. GetCentOS.org. So, press announcement, CentOS is no longer being built downstream of RHEL. No longer want, they don't want to do the separate and maintain redundant repositories. According to them, don't, don't, no one shoot me here. So, the latest source code is going to be available via CentOS Stream. That's what you're going to get. Now, CentOS Stream's not RHEL. It's not Red Hat Enterprise Linux. 
That's unfortunate. And that's not what you need to build your Rockies or your Almas and uh, yeah. Oracle. <laughs> also Oracle, keep that in mind. So your rail sources, uh, they're going to be available, but only via the customer partner portal. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> this way, you know, Red Hat can minimally perform their duties you know, legally or whatever you want to call it under the GPL by providing the source only to subscribers. They can get away with that. That's yeah. the thing. Does that does that leave a bad taste in people's mouths? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, I saw this uh, post on um, Hacker News earlier this morning. I was like, well, couldn't like Rocky or Alma, they just get like a subscription to get the source code? Right? Yeah. They could do that. Yeah. Wrong. Wrong. Oh. Not according to section 1.2G of the product appendix one from Red Hat. Which is this guy right here? I, I went to. I, I did reporting. Everyone I know be be shocked. And um, using subscription services in connection with any redistribution of software, using subscription services to support or maintain any non Red Hat software products without purchasing subscription service for each such instance. Who's the mm-hmm. same nut? Is IBM? Is IBM trying to take down Rocky? Is IBM trying to take down Alma? No, they're not. That said, IBM is absolutely 100%. This is laser targeted at Oracle. Mm. Oracle's Enterprise Linux, which is RHEL with the serial numbers filed off. There's even a tool inside that Oracle oh, makes guess. that will convert a RHEL instance into an Oracle instance. So if you're sitting at your job right now and you lost the argument with management and they went with Oracle Linux, you know the Ralph Wiggum thing in the back of the bus? Chuckles, I'm in danger. You are. <laughs> yeah. You were gonna have problems in your life. Now again, does this leave? How does this affect Rocky? How does this affect all? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm mean, if any of our Red Hat employees would like to come back on the show, which has happened in the past, and maybe yeah. explain this out. Love to have it. Same way with anybody from Rocky Linux working with that project or Alma Linux to help me suss this out. But it does look like it's like putting the spike. The what do you call it? The stick into the spokes. Yeah. With all of these projects. <laughs> nail in the coffin. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be nail in the coffin. No, no, it isn't. <laughs> I don't. But I don't know um how exactly this is going to affect Yeah, how it's gonna pan out. Rocky Linux. And see, no one wants sent to us true. They they don't. No one yeah. was asking for that. And with uh, Rocky Linux and Alma Linux being built on from rel sources and Red Hat saying, we just don't want to maintain that anymore. We were doing it. We are just being nice. And and again, I don't think this was aimed at them. I think this was aimed squarely at Oracle. And it's like, but we got these leeches over here, Oracle. Yeah. That are, and uh, this, this is putting a kibosh on that. And yeah. for those of you, you know, I got my mouth shut. Like when I be bought Red Hat, we had uh, we had someone on the show from Red Hat come on uh, weekly day, the Wednesdays. Myself, Jordan, and uh, we talked about like, hey, what's going on? I just kept my mouth shut. But you know, IBM's like, we're going to be very hands off. IBM doesn't know how to be hands off. Mm-hmm. It's not in their corporate DNA. Show me an example of IBM being hands off for any amount of time. Just one, just one. That's all I want. Because I know you can. So things like this are going to happen. Things like this are going to change. You know, they're, they're going to do cutbacks. They're going to do restructuring. Uh, the Fedora Project's community leader, that position is gone now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do think it's, you know, really good for them to unify the code. It just, it makes it easier for them to maintain, and that's understandable. And, you know, when the <laughs> CentOS stream, uh, when they started, uh, gosh, was it? A year and a half ago. Well, to be now? very clear, they're still <laughs> they're still maintaining yeah. that it's just not publicly available. Yeah. Hmm. It is to their subscribers. So okay. that's how you can get a hold. They're they're putting it behind a wall. Going you Paywall. can't just publicly get yeah. you gotta have a subscription. Hmm. 
the best I can make of it. Maybe I'm 100% wrong. That's what I'm reading. Again, send in some feedback. Leave a comment below this. Let us know your thoughts because I'm just reading what I got in front of me and that's what it reads like. Mm-hmm. However, however, if you're a big fan of subscriptions, I got one. Ah, like, yes. I got one for you. Patreon.com forward slash Linux game cast. <laughs> but you know what? We give you stuff back. We're going to give you access to this show, but all of it. The pre-show, the show itself, the after show, MP3, podcast format, custom RSS feed, make it worth your while, access to our Discord, and a bunch of other stuff. A bunch of sneak peeks. I don't like putting anything behind like a permanent paywall. That's not my style. But mm-hmm. I give you first crack at something. Why? Because you're helping support small independent media. And we do appreciate it. Always try to be available. Live on our Discord the other six days a week. Live on IRC. Live on Twitch. We got a bunch of things going on. Tuesdays, me and Joe, we do track mania. We get people together. We have a good time. If you hate fun, stay away from it. If you hate <laughs> physics platforming and race cars, just wackiness and silliness, stay away from it. We do this show on Wednesdays. We don't hit you with ads. We don't sell your data. We host all this stuff ourselves. It's a horrible idea, but I fully support it. Tomorrow night, tune in with Jordan and Empty as they're trying to figure out how to play Portal 2 Reloaded, which has a time portal. It (laughs) it is unintentionally hilarious. As somebody who went through Portal 2 co-op with Jordan, it gets gnarly quick. And this is extra gnarly because of the new mechanic. Yeah. (laughs) Then on Friday, we're going to be back for Trackmania Rounds, followed by Cup of the Evening in 2020. Saturday back with Linux Gamecast Weekly. A lot of stuff we got going on, so we do appreciate your support. Plenty of ways to do it. Head over to LinuxGamecast.com, mouse over the support button, or double-click on it if you're on the tablet. That's a compromise I had to make. If you want to get old, we got PayPal, Bitcoin, all the different ways. Or you know what? Just watch the show and say hi. Stop in our chat. I like that, yeah. too. Leave a comment on a video. Head over to Jill's wish list. She desperately <laughs> needs two cups full of penguins, keyboard stand, <laughs> And some more cups and some RGB things. If you get anything from our wish list, of course, you can always leave us a note and we will read it out. We got one for the studio. It's filled with mass loaded vinyl. Oh, yeah. Curtains. And that's about epic motherboards. That's that's my next purchase. That's what I'm saving my pennies for right now (laughs) is that $500 motherboard. But it's $500. Oh boy! <laughs> I've never bought this Threadripper motherboard. I, I sit and I you got no, it used, huh? <laughs> I waited a year and I got it used too. I got it for yeah. three hundred and eighty dollars, and I was mad about that. But that was better than five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So um, I hate buying new stuff. I hate <laughs> I buying know. new stuff. It's such a waste to have like two of something when somebody's like, "Hey, I want to get rid of this at a discount." Absolutely. Always looking for stuff for that. Um, LinuxTeamCast.com. We appreciate your support, but that's the closest we have. For commercial. Now we need to talk mm-hmm. about something that for me is like 70% there. It's like 70% there, but I'll tell you about the specs in a minute, but I'm just going to give you an yeah. overview of it. <laughs> so this is cool. This is a sweet, a very sweet Raspberry Pi device. It is called the Una Hiker. Una Hiker, it's a small single board computer that features a 2.8 inch touchscreen, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth, and it is equipped with Bluetooth? a light sensor. <laughs> Bluetooth. <laughs> Bluetooth, yes. <laughs> and it is equipped with a light sensor, accelerometer, gyroscope, and microphone. And it has a built-in coprocessor, coprocessor and is able to communicate with various analog and digital sensors and actuators. And it is it is really cool because it offers actually an innovative development experience for learning, coding, and creating. And it comes w- with Debian Linux and many, many programmed apps are already, programming apps are already pre-installed. And it features a built-in Jupyter Notebook browser-based programming environment, which allows developers to program the single board computer using a smartphone or tablet, which is Really cool and really uh, forward thinking. And uh, the integrated Pin Pong control library allows developers to directly control Unihiker's built in sensors and hundreds of connected sensors and actuators using Python. And it's actually available at 
dfrobot.com on their site right now for $79.90. And I was really impressed by this. Uh, they've, they've, it, they didn't just make a Raspberry Pi, put a screen on it, and, and are selling it. They're actually thinking you know, more forward about the, the programming. Like uh, a built-in ecosystem. Got yeah. Got stored and giving you all the sensors and things that you need. And I was yeah. excited about this. I was looking at it. I'm like, all right, this is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Then I get down to the specs. All right. $79, as Joe pointed out, with a screen. What do you get? Quad-core ARM Cortex-835. You know what? That's not bad. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. I'm like, all right. Yeah. 16 gigs of flash EMMC. Neat. Got something to install, too. It's got Wi-Fi. And the blue booths, also neat. <laughs> Always looking for that. Yes. Then we get to the one thing where I go, boo earns 512 megs around. I know. I was a little surprised about However, that. However, <laughs> this, this is like not meant as a desktop device. Yeah. And let's be exactly. perfectly honest. I can run a full-on Nginx uh, SQL backend plus mm -hmm. whatever the Trackmania server is, plus a Jitsi server on that. And still keep it under a gig. So, I mean, for a single use application, 2.8 inch, 240 by 320 touchscreen, you get a light sensor, accelerant, no barometer. So, you're not going to be out in your backyard barometing things, unfortunately. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool for what you get. I wish uh, there was one that had, uh, okay, here's the two things I want. Two things I want bigger, higher res touchscreen. Give me like a 720p touchscreen. Yeah, it's it's 320 by 240 yeah. currently. So, yeah. I mean, you can do some big, chunky text, you know, what you would need for, like, sensors and things like that to kind of tell you what's going on. But, yeah, give me give me a 720p screen the size I can live with. Give me 4 gigs of RAM, and I'll give you 129 bucks for it. Mm-hmm. How about Yeah, that? 4 gigs would be great. I think 4 gigs would be usable. Yeah. Um, I'd rather 32, possibly 1 terabyte. However, I'm willing to... Uh, Make concessions. How long do you think? We, we, okay, how hmm. many years away are we? How many years away are we from a single board computer shipping that, say, for under $1,000 with 512 gigs of memory on it? Mm, not that far. I, <laughs> I don't think we're that far, actually. <laughs> You can already buy a single board computers that have a lot more RAM. You're just going to pay a lot of money. Well, the architectures right now are pretty much locked into a max now at 32 gigs. Right 32. Now. Yeah, 32. But I oh. think that with Risk Five, it's probably going to change. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I was about to say based on what wishes. Yeah. <laughs> I can get behind wishes. Um, or, or if they include uh, multiple, there, there was one board we saw that had multiple ARM chips on it, where you could increase the mem the RAM. Uh, that that would work. <laughs> well, if we would basically ever get some type of dual like, processors or triple processors. <laughs> well, unlike um, you know, your RAM's going to live on the board, not on the um, SOC itself, unless mm -hmm. you're Apple. Or, yeah, <laughs> yeah, putting the memory, but I would say, or even like the need to it, 256 gig SBC. Okay, this, this is what we're talking about a commoditized like Raspberry Pi type device for let's say under a thousand, so 500 bucks. Uh, uh, it's probably gonna be more than a decade before we see something like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm thinking, but I, yeah, no, it was like, I, is there the see. need for yeah. it? No, that's my big driving yeah, factor, that's, right? Yeah, just it, for the industrial mar market, absolutely. But for a consumer market, <laughs> no. Well, when I think about industrial, I think about less memory. Yeah, because they're you know very very uh, targeted uh, uh, processors for certain tasks, they're so they don't appliances. actually need a lot of memory. Like, what do yeah. you do? I do this one thing, and I do it pretty well. Also, I have like. 50 of them in a box in case I ever need to replace it. So yeah, cheap, built to a price point. I, I was thinking more along the, AI, the the lines of AI, you know, with the growth of AI. AI and, acceleration. Um, yeah, Kubernetes. and I don't know what we'd be seeing on the single board computer market, though. 
like outside mm-hmm. of like even like the jets and twos and things like that we're seeing some very yeah. primitive ai processing um like i think on sbcs feel free to correct me if i'm right anybody leave me a comment but we're in the uh oh look it kind of works phase right now on um single board computers with like what you can do with ai and whisper it and like at the speed of smell but it does work compared to mm-hmm. compute gpu cuda you know where yeah. i'm going with that mm-hmm. so you know hiker go check yeah. it out Unihiker.com forward slash news for awesome. 70 bucks. You might just want to pick one up to say you have one. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And they're available now. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can make a very blurry tricorder out of it. Yeah. With, with big chunky text. Or not. You know what? I'm not your boss. You do whatever you want. <laughs> Ladies and yes. gentlemen, we're a little over time, but we had a lot to cover. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for hanging out. We do appreciate it. Come check us out live yes. if you're listening after the fact. It's at 3 p.m. Or you can watch this on our Athletic Themecast Uncut channel about a week later, but we'll put it up a week early for patrons. All right. Time for some credits. Speaking of those yes. lovely miscarriages. Yeah. Lots of credits. I got new LEDs people. in the background, which are confusing me. I'm like, why am I seeing a reflection? Oh, yeah. That'll do it. And we have so many great patrons. To think, including a lot that are in chat right now, like Strider and Artharin. Oh, they can hear you. You don't want to talk about it. You want to talk about the people who aren't here, Jill. That's how it's done. Yes, this is true. Well, we have Empty and Blasphemy, uh, uh, Veritanuda and Nubbin, David, <laughs> and our Death Notes, Dirty saw, Dean, uh, Dodger. Ver- 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 nah. Veritanuda has uh, one of the AR headsets. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he posted that in chat. Episode 380. <laughs> oh. <Yay. laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you have an AR headset and would like to tell <laughs> us about it, here's the contact form so I can include it in a show because I'm not ripping text out of our Discord to publish yeah. publicly. <laughs> <laughs> what stays in Discord stays in Discord. There yes. We go. All right, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. I'll be sure. back uh, with Jill. Friday. Yes. Come say hi. Come participate. Mm. Yay.